Hey guys, my name is Matt Johnson, and one of the most popular series that I've created is my video editing PC build guides, where I walk you through the exact parts that you need to buy and how to put them together to build a video editing PC. While many of you love those videos, one of the most common emails that I've received is that you don't want to have to build your own PC. You would much rather be able to purchase a pre-made PC that requires little to no work to set up, because a lot of you are working professionals that don't have time to build your own. You want something fast and you're willing to pay for it, within reason. Now I'm just a guy that films weddings and makes YouTube videos. I do not have unlimited money to go out and buy a ton of PCs to review them and tell you which one you should purchase. I have a baby and she is quite expensive. The good news is that Zotac, a company that creates computers, reached out to me and asked if I wanted to review one of their newest mini PCs, aimed specifically at video editors and content creation. So today we're going to be talking about this deceptively tiny yet powerful little box, the Zotac Mac. Magnus, and I'm going to be reviewing it from the perspective of a video editor that uses Adobe Premiere Pro. So if you are a filmmaker and you've been considering purchasing a pre-built PC and you want something that requires minimal effort to set up in a small form factor, then I think you're going to find this video very interesting. Let's start off with the first thing you probably noticed about this PC, the size. When it arrived, the FedEx box was smaller than I thought. Then the box inside that was even smaller. Then the computer inside the box was smaller still. My first PC that I built was a full tower case, and my current video editing PC is a mid tower, and it completely dwarfs this computer. If you are wanting to make a size comparison, of course the first computer that comes to my mind is the Mac Mini from Apple. Much like the Mac Mini, this computer is made to be put on a desk, in a small space out of the way, but still provide you with enough power to be productive. If you are editing videos where space is at a premium and you do not want to purchase a laptop, I can see this computer fitting very well into a small room. There is a catch though. There's always a catch. Oddly enough, I'm going to tell you to make sure that you have enough space for the power brick for this computer. Is the computer small or is the power brick large? This power brick is about one third of the size of the entire computer and weighs 3.1 pounds. For comparison, the computer itself only weighs 3.9 pounds. Thankfully, you can put the power brick down under your desk and not think about it. With the Magnus being this size and the power brick being this size, a few thoughts came to mind. First, how much power was Zotac able to cram into this tiny computer? And second, is it going to overheat because of this small size? And let's throw a third question in there too. Is it going to sound really loud under load whenever these fans spin up to keep something this small and this powerful cool? Let's talk about components first. If you're in the United States like me, Zotac is only selling this computer as a bare bones system. This means that it comes with a motherboard, CPU, graphics card, Wi-Fi, power supply, fans, and a case. But you are going to need to purchase and install your own SSD, RAM, and operating system. For the purpose of this review though, Zotac sent me an international unit. So, according to my YouTube analytics, my 6% of viewers from India and 4.6% of viewers from the United Kingdom, hello, this is the computer that you will probably be able to purchase. This international unit comes pre-installed with the SSD, RAM, and operating system of Zotac's choice. I'm saying the parts inside this thing were their choice because the brands that they chose are not necessarily my first choice. For now though, let's talk about the bare bones version of this computer, which is the version that my US viewers will be able to purchase. This Magnus model comes with an Intel Core i7, 9750H, 6 core, 12 thread processor. Yes, that is a processor that you commonly see in laptops, but I'm sure it's because it's a lot easier to make something this small if you use parts that are designed for a small computer like a laptop. From a power standpoint, I would say that the 9750H is a great mid to higher level CPU. I really wish they were able to fit one of Intel's new 8-core, 16-thread CPUs into this computer, but that didn't happen. That said, this CPU will still edit 4K video very easily and chew through 1080p video so fast. Don't worry, I did benchmarks, which we will talk about very soon. Speaking earlier, though, about cramming things into this small box, we need to talk about the graphics card, which is probably the most surprising thing about the Magnus. This version of the Magnus comes with an NVIDIA RTX 2070 inside, a quite powerful graphics card 
car that retails for around $500 standalone. And going back to the size here, I'm quite impressed that they were able to fit that into a system this small. I did not do any gaming benchmarks on this because I want to keep this review focused on video editing, but dang, if you want a small gaming device, you should be able to game on this very easily and even turn on some of Nvidia's fancy ray tracing effects if you want to make things look very pretty. While Adobe Premiere doesn't take nearly as much advantage of a graphics card as I would personally like it to, there is still quite a noticeable difference in rendering whenever you enable your graphics card versus whenever it's disabled. So, especially if you have a lot of effects applied, having a powerful graphics card like this is only going to help you. Alternatively, if you edit in DaVinci Resolve, that program loves having a powerful graphics card, and I'm sure this RTX 2070 will be very beneficial to you. There are some cons to this graphics card setup though. First, there's upgradability. This isn't a typical slot in graphics card, so you're not gonna be able to just drop in a faster one when you want to upgrade. You are stuck with the RTX 2070. That leads me into the second con of the Magnus, and arguably the biggest omission from this computer. You may be thinking to yourself, Matt, you don't need to be able to upgrade the graphics card of this computer. You could just plug an external GPU into the Thunderbolt port and use that and you're set. Well, the Magnus doesn't come with a Thunderbolt port. And that is so perplexing to me because one of the main reasons that you purchase an Intel CPU over an AMD system is that you want to have Thunderbolt support. It's not here. There are two groups of people that use Thunderbolt. The first group is gamers that want to use an external GPU, which the Magnus is ostensibly targeting by putting an RTX 2070 inside. The second group is video editors. They use a buttload of external hard drives and RAID storage arrays that want to be able to access their media as fast as possible. These video editors may also want to use an external GPU to speed up the rendering as well. So yes, the lack of a Thunderbolt port is a huge glaring omission with this system. System. And I'm really hoping that Zotac will be able to add one in a future version of the Magnus. For now though, if you do not need to use Thunderbolt external drives and you do not need to use an external GPU, I still think that you're going to be okay with the Magnus. And the RTX 2070 is pretty cutting edge and it should last you for quite a while. Moving on, let's talk about other components. If Thunderbolt isn't there, what other sort of inputs and outputs has Zotac put on this box? Well, it's surprisingly pretty good, especially for how small it is. On the back, you get four USB 3.0 ports and one USB 3.1 Type-C port. On the front, you have another USB 3.1 and USB 3.1 Type-C port. Back on the back, you have two Ethernet ports. One is one gigabit and the other is 2.5 gigabit. I really wish they were able to include 10 gig Ethernet on here so you could use this PC to edit footage stored on a NAS. As it is, the 2.5 gig speed would work great for transferring footage, but I wouldn't recommend editing 4K with it. For your monitor, you have two HDMI 2.0 ports and one DisplayPort 1.4 port. Lastly, on the back, you have two connections for the Wi-Fi 6 antennas, which, let me just say, Wi-Fi is one of two things that I love that Zotac included with this box. The second is on the front in the form of the full-size SD card reader. As somebody that copies a lot of footage, this makes me so happy to see. The front of the Magnus is also where you will find the headphone and mic jacks for the PC. Unfortunately, there are not any audio connectors on the back, so if you want to use speakers, you'll need to plug them in here. On the bare bones system that you can buy in the US, this is where the parts stop. You are going to need to purchase and install RAM, SSD, and an operating system if you want to have a fully working computer. But I have good news for you. The Magnus is one of the easiest computers I have ever opened up and installed things into. Much like building any computer, all you need is a screwdriver. Opening the case is as simple as flipping it over and removing two thumb screws. Then the bottom slides off and you have access to literally everything you can install and modify with this PC. There are two RAM stick slots in the SODIMM form factor that laptops typically use, as well as a slot for an M.2 SSD, a traditional 2.5 inch spinning hard drive, the Wi-Fi card, and an Intel Optane memory stick slot. As I said earlier though, I'm reviewing the international version of this PC. So it came pre-installed with a 128 gig SSD, eight gigabytes of RAM, and a one terabyte Seagate 5400 RPM hard drive. I also asked Zotac if they would be willing to send me more RAM as well. While yes, Adobe Premiere's minimum requirements are 
8 gigabytes of RAM. They also recommend at least 16 gigabytes if you want to edit HD video and 32 gigabytes if you want to edit 4K. And the benchmarks I'm going to be showing you will make that painfully obvious why you need that much RAM. Thankfully, Zotac knows people at HyperX Memory, and HyperX was kind enough to provide me with 32 gigabytes of their HyperX Impact DDR4 memory at 2666 megahertz, so I could properly review this machine as a 4K video editing computer. Installing this RAM was as simple as pressing two clips to release the old eight gigabytes of RAM, and then slotting in the two 16 gigabyte HyperX sticks and pressing down. That's it, no tools required. The Magnus automatically recognized the new RAM and it worked flawlessly. If you wanna check out HyperX memory, I will link to it down in the description. So like I said, Zotac has built one of the easiest to open computers. And I hope this part of the video has shown you how unintimidating it can be to open it up and install a few parts. Now it's time to talk about everyone's favorite topic, benchmarks. And I wanna be clear that I use the stock SSD that came with this computer, as well as the upgraded 32 gigabytes of RAM whenever I ran these benchmarks. You may be able to see faster video editing performance if you used a faster SSD. On to the benchmarks. Let's answer these three questions. Does this mini PC overheat? Does it thermal throttle? Does it make too much noise? And the answers to that are no, yes, and maybe, depending on your office environment. For benchmarking, I ran synthetic stress tests in ADA64, and I also exported a five minute wedding film in 4K and 1080p from Adobe Premiere. Let's talk hard numbers. The synthetic test showed me that the Magnus CPU idles between 45 to 50 Celsius. And when you put the CPU and GPU under load, the CPU is going to rise to a maximum of 87 Celsius. Celsius. That's hot, but not too hot. It's not hitting 99 degrees Celsius like some computers do. The main issue is that when this computer hits 87 Celsius, it will also begin to thermal throttle, up to a maximum of 41%. Why is this a bad thing, Matt? Because whenever your CPU thermal throttles, it has to slow down. This means that your videos may not render as fast. What does this look like in real world usage though? What sort of slowdowns are we looking at whenever we're talking about rendering a video from Adobe Premiere? Let's look at the render test that I ran in Premiere Pro now. Completely stock, as the computer was delivered to me with its eight gigabytes of RAM, the six core 12 thread CPU of the Magnus rendered out a five minute wedding film in high quality 4K in 26 minutes and 52 seconds. It also rendered that same video in 1080p HD in nine minutes and two seconds. Remember though, I really wanted 32 gigabytes of RAM for this system because I did not want the memory to be a bottleneck whenever it's rendering video. When I installed those 32 gigabytes of HyperX memory, the render time for that five minute wedding film in 4K went from 26 minutes and 52 seconds down to 18 minutes and 34 seconds. That is quite an improvement. Now let's talk about fan noise whenever it comes to video editing and rendering, because I'm sure many of you want a quieter workspace that isn't like while you're trying to get work done. Here's the good news. Zotac has tuned the Magnus PC fans to only run at a maximum of 60% speed, which means that they don't get super loud even when rendering. They also emit a much deeper sound under load than say the fans on my Dell XPS 15 laptop. Those fans tend to almost shriek a bit under load, whereas the Magnus fans are much deeper and less annoying to hear. Don't get me wrong, if you have a quieter room, you will definitely hear the fans whenever you're rendering a video, but they are not intrusive by any means. I think that Zotac has done a fantastic job of tuning the fans, especially for a computer this small. Going back to the benchmarks though, I'm sure you may be thinking, Matt, if Zotac has tuned these fans to only be running at 60%, what if we turn them up to 100%? Will the computer run run faster, throttle less, and export videos faster? Well, don't worry, I tested this, and I don't think it's a good idea. For starters, turning up the computer's fans to 100% maximum makes them significantly louder. They also tend to ramp up constantly, so even if you are scrubbing around on your timeline, you can hear them, it's annoying. But what about the performance gain? Could you suffer through the noise if the computer itself is faster? Well, I tested this multiple times with synthetic benchmarks and video renders, and I found that with the fans cranked to 
I was only ever seeing at most a 200 megahertz improvement over the stock fan speed. Render times dropped a negligible amount from 18 minutes and 34 seconds to 18 minutes and 10 seconds for my 4K render, and from 5 minutes and 45 seconds to 5 minutes and 26 seconds for 1080p. That is not nearly enough performance increase for me to justify the noise. Now there is one other thing that I tried to speed up video renders and cut back on CPU throttling. I used an app called Throttle Stop to undervolt the Magnus CPU. And when I did that, I saw that my render times dropped from 18 minutes and 34 seconds to 17 minutes and 42 seconds for my 4K video, and 5 minutes and 45 seconds to 5 minutes and 11 seconds with a 1080p video. I also saw CPU temperatures drop by up to 5 degrees Celsius. And that was at stock fan speeds. So my recommendation is that if you opt to purchase the Zotac Magnus, I would recommend maxing out your RAM with 32 gigabytes and also using throttle stop to under volt your CPU a little bit so it runs cooler. There is one last thing that we need to talk about in regards to benchmarking the video editing capabilities of this computer. Many of you have commented and emailed me saying, Matt, video rendering is great, but rendering is such a small part of the video editing process. How does this computer handle scrubbing on a timeline? Does it play back 4K video smoothly while I'm editing? How does it handle regular editing tasks. Well, first off, let me tell you that while yes, the CPU and GPU are important to the speed you experience when playing back clips on your timeline, the amount of RAM that your computer has, as well as the hard drive speed that your video clips are stored on, is arguably just as important. I edit my videos off of an external SSD, so the video files load very fast, and I recommend that you do the same. I will also tell you that Premiere Pro was much more responsive when editing with 32 gigabytes of RAM versus 8 gigabytes. When this computer only had 8 gigs of RAM, I would scrub around to a 4K clip and Premiere would just sit there for 1-2 to two seconds before the clip finally loaded. Premiere even froze up on me while I was simply opening up my video project because it ran out of RAM when I had 8 gigabytes installed. With 32 gigabytes of RAM, you will not need to worry about that happening, and with 32 gigs, I was able to scrub around on the timeline and clips loaded in less than half a second. If that video editing speed still doesn't sound ideal to you, I would highly recommend creating proxy files, especially of your 4K video clips. Even on my 10 core 20 thread desktop that I normally use to edit videos, that still does not load clips instantaneously, and so that's why I create proxies. If you create proxies, you're gonna be able to scrub around in your your timeline and it's gonna feel like it's made of butter. It's so smooth. So if you want to check out my tutorial on how to create proxies, I will link to it up in the corner and down in the description. So to conclude this part about overall timeline performance, I found the Magnus to be about as responsive as my 10 core editing desktop. Is it perfect? No, but that's more of a knock against Adobe Premiere and its level of optimization, not really the Magnus. I'm very impressed by this PC, especially considering its size. Wrapping up, we need to talk about the price of this computer, and I also want to compare it to some of its competitors. As I said in the start of this review, Zotac is selling two versions of this computer. A bare-bones version that requires you to supply an SSD, RAM, and operating system, and a fully built version that includes those parts and only requires you to plug it in and turn it on. So which one should you buy? Well, if you're in the US, you're really limited to the bare-bones version. But even if you live internationally, I would still recommend purchasing the bare-bones option. Why? Because the international version that includes all the parts only comes with 8 gigabytes of RAM, which we have already determined isn't really enough for video editing. In addition, you will most likely want more than the 128 gigs of SSD space they include, especially when you can get a faster SSD too. Those of you shooting 4K will also want more space than the one terabyte spinning hard drive that they include as well. The bare bones version sells from Zotac's website for $1,599.99. And you've probably already opened up PC Part Picker while this video streamed and started putting in parts prices. And if you didn't, don't worry. I did it for you. To build a bare bones PC with a roughly equivalent desktop class 6 core Intel processor, CPU cooler, decent motherboard, RTX 2070 graphics card, power supply, Wi-Fi adapter and case, you're looking at around $1,250. And then right now you're looking at the price of the bare bones version of the Zotac Magnus and you're thinking to yourself, that's like $350 more. Why would I buy this computer whenever I could build my own? And that's where I'm going to stop you for a second, because there is one major differentiating factor that you need to consider whenever we're talking about the Magnus 
versus a traditional video editing desktop. Your custom built PC in a mid tower size case is comparable to the Magnus from a raw power and specs perspective. But when you add overall size of the computer to the equation, this becomes a different argument entirely. The Zotac Magnus is many times smaller than my desktop computer. Heck, it's only a bit larger than my graphics card. So yes, the price of the parts in the Magnus are more expensive than those you would get in a custom built desktop. And I would not even recommend buying the Magnus if you have enough room for a regular desktop. But if you need the power of a large desktop and a much smaller, more portable setup, that is where the Zotac Magnus really shines. It is going to be up to you if the size savings is worth that $350 price difference. Lastly, in regards to price, other than saving money by building your own video editing computer, there is one other competitor that comes to mind whenever I think about small video editing computers like the Magnus. I'm thinking, of course, of the Apple Mac Mini. Both are quite small PCs that are meant to get out of the way and fit in spaces where a traditional desktop wouldn't. Looking at the customization page on Apple's site, you could kit out a Mac Mini with a six core i7 CPU that's very similar to the Magnus. With eight gigabytes of RAM and 256 gigabytes of storage, that's only gonna set you back $1,299. That's $300 less than the cost of the bare bones Magnus and you're getting a fully usable computer from Apple. Wait a second, Intel integrated graphics? The Zotac Magnus has a roughly $500 graphics card inside, while the Mac Mini has nothing. This is going to cause video rendering to be noticeably slower on the Mac Mini due to the lack of the integrated GPU. Now you can work around this on the Mac Mini. Due to Apple generously giving you four Thunderbolt 3 ports on the back, you can purchase an external GPU enclosure and an AMD graphics card that will get you pretty close to the performance of the RTX 2070 when it comes to video editing. Not with gaming to be clear, but with video editing, it's gonna be pretty comparable. A good graphics card enclosure is gonna cost you around $300. Then let's toss in a Radeon RX 5700 XT for $399, and suddenly you're looking at roughly $2,000 for this Mac Mini. Not to mention you're increasing the size footprint substantially with the GPU enclosure and all of the cabling required to add that extra power. With the Zotac Magnus bare bones costing $1,600, you should easily be able to include those 32 gigabytes of HyperX RAM, a super fast Samsung 970 Evo hard drive, and a two terabyte Western digital hard drive for all your 4K files. And for all that, it is still gonna cost you less than what the Mac Mini would cost, and it's all gonna fit into this nice and small footprint. So let's wrap this all up. In conclusion, if you've watched any of my build guides, you would know that I love building computers. And I think that building your own PC is one of the best ways to guarantee that you are getting the best possible parts for the best possible price. There are sometimes situations where building your own computer isn't the best option though. Maybe you don't want the hassle of building your own computer and don't want to screw it up. Maybe you have the budget for computer, but you don't have the time to put it together and you want something that's very easy to set up. Or maybe, and this situation may be most applicable to the Magnus, you have a small workspace and you need a computer that is not going to take up a ton of room while still being quite powerful. If you fit one of those above scenarios, then I think the Magnus could be a great choice for you. Is it perfect? No. I wish that Zotac had included Thunderbolt 3 support for external RAID arrays and GPUs. But but if you don't need Thunderbolt, I think that Zotac managed to cram a ton of useful features and hardware into this PC. From the integrated Wi-Fi to the quite powerful graphics card, while the Magnus is more expensive than some of your PC options, remember that the majority of those options won't be able to fit into such a small space. And yes, the bare bones version will require you to open it up and install the RAM, SSD, and operating system. But that is still significantly quicker than putting together an entire PC from scratch. It is also really hard to screw it up, don't worry. If you want to purchase the Zotac Magnus, I will be sure to link to it down in the video description. And I will also include all of the parts that I would recommend that you pick up for it as well. The RAM that I recommend, SSD, operating system, keyboard, mouse, monitor, all those things you're going to need as well. I will also include a link in the description to my PC build guide. So if you want to save some money and build your own PC, you can do that as well. With that, thank you so much for watching. It would be a huge, much bigger than the Zotac Magnus here. Size help to me if you would consider liking this video and subscribing if you want to see more videos like this in the future. With that, thank you so much for watching and have a great day.